We begin this hour in Ukraine, where the first shipment of additional American military aid has arrived, according to the U.S. Embassy there. This is part of a package worth $200 U.S. million promised to Kiev last week by U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken. The initial delivery includes defensive weapons and ammunition as the country prepares for possible Russian aggression. Moscow has deployed some 100,000 troops along its border with Ukraine, but insists it has no plans to launch an attack. The Russian military flexing its muscles in the Vornets region bordering Ukraine. Moscow denies it's planning an invasion, but with this slick video released by its defense ministry, it at least wants to send the message that it's ready to fight. There is real concern in the region about Russia's motives. Russian troops are now positioned in Belarus, all along Russia's border to Ukraine, and are massed in eastern Ukraine, where fighting has been ongoing for years. Further to the north, the Baltic states of Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania are promising to support Ukraine, with shipments of weaponry and military support, arguing that diplomacy alone can't prevent an armed conflict. The aggressor always weighs the possible losses and likely damage. I think that a strong state capable of defending itself is really the only way to increase the chances of a peaceful resolution. However, it's a principle of deterrence not endorsed by Germany, which has disappointed Kiev by refusing to supply weaponry to Ukraine. Now, off-the-cuff comments by Germany's naval chief have added more fuel to the diplomatic fire. Kai Achim Schönbach, on a visit to India, said Russian President Vladimir Putin probably deserved respect and that the Crimean Peninsula, annexed by Russia, would not return to Ukraine. Just what has happened in Ukraine. Hey, the Crimea Peninsula is, is, is gone. They'll never come back. This is, this is a fact. And we have to, to learn that political issues are factual questions and not emotions. These remarks have now cost him his job. And the faux pas has added to the misgivings in Kiev over Germany's stance on Ukraine. But with the uncertainty looming, Ukraine has been assured that it doesn't stand alone. The UK sent anti-tank missiles earlier this week, and the first delivery of US military supplies has already touched down. Meanwhile, residents in Kiev formed a human chain in celebration of Ukraine's National Unity Day hoping that opposing sides can still come together and hold on to their stated goal of a diplomatic solution. Let's bring in DW correspondent Matthias Bullinger, who joins us from Kiev. Matthias, what exactly has been delivered and what does this mean for the conflict now? Well, uh, Ukraine is now procuring weapons from many countries. There, there was this big shipment from the U.S. There have been deliveries from Britain. Also other countries, the Baltic states and the Netherlands have announced shipments. It's mostly about light weapons that are easy to use and uh, effective in case of an evasion. Anti-tank weapons, of course, uh, complicated military systems uh, are less uh, urgent on the list as it would take to, to time to install them and train soldiers. So it's, it's mostly um, weapons that would make an invasion by Russia more costly. This is the, the idea now to deter Russia by making an invasion costly. Now, aside from deterrence, there's also been a flurry of diplomatic activity aimed at diffusing tensions. But now the United Kingdom says the Kremlin is trying to install pro-Russian leadership in Ukraine. What has the re reaction been there to this accusation? This press release is raising more questions than it provides answers. They gave a list of four former officials of the Yanukovych administration. That's the administration that was ousted in the Maidan protests in 2014, saying the Kremlin wants to install them, but how they want to install them uh, and, and how, uh, what strategy they're, they're, they're using, would this be uh, 
people who are on the list, for example, after a possible invasion, or is there any any other plan? There's no answers to that, so this is kind of very strange and, and, and hard to understand information. These people are not popular, so one thing we couldn't possibly exclude is that Russia wants to somehow uh, 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 spur a, a, a popular movement to install them. I do want to ask you about some of the controversy in Germany right now regarding the comments made by the country's now ex-Navy chief, as we saw in that report there. How has Kiev reacted to what he said? I think these uh, these uh, these these mentions of this now retired navy chief uh, ha have really galvanized uh, a feeling that has been lingering in Kiev that uh, Germany is an unreliable partner because uh, the two main reasons are Nord Stream 2 which would uh, as people see it here, considerably weaken Ukraine's position by making it less relevant as a country for gas transits. And uh, the other thing is Germany's refusal to provide weapons to Ukraine. Um, uh, uh, and that does not only include that Germany does not sell itself weapons to Ukraine, which is uh, something that could be easily uh, uh, circumvented by buying weapons everywhere, uh, anywhere, but uh, that Germany is also blocking weapons deliveries, for example, from the Baltic states uh, who need permission to resell weapons that they once bought in Germany or from the NATO procurement agency. And uh, while diplomats are not uh, confrontative on this issue, uh, discontent is high and civil society is even accusing, some people in civil society are even accusing Germany of sabotaging Ukraine's efforts to defend itself. DW correspondent Matthias Bollinger reporting from Kiev. Thank you, Matthias. Well, meanwhile, the U.S. State Department has refused to confirm media reports that it has ordered U.S. embassy staff in Kiev to leave Ukraine. It comes as tens of thousands of Russian troops gather at Ukraine's borders. This comes as Washington has sent its first shipment of a $200 million military aid package for Ukraine to bolster its defenses. A U.S. cargo plane landed at an airport in the Ukrainian capital with 90 tons of military equipment, mostly small arms ammunition. Russia has repeatedly denied that it's planning a new attack against Ukraine. Well, for more, I'm joined by our Washington correspondent, Carolina Chimoy. Hi, Carolina. Good to see you. Now, if it turns out that media reports about the U.S. ordering their embassy staff to uh, leave the Ukrainian capital are correct, what message are they sending? Well, the tension is obviously already growing, Pablo. We can see this also in the last statements from the White House and the State Department. And in case uh, the evacuation of U.S. diplomats based in Kiev are officially confirmed, this could point to an even more tense scenario, of course. At the same time, it's important, though, to uh, point out that Russia is using this tense situation as a demonstration of power uh, to bring uh, the United States to the negotiation table um, to discuss security issues in in Europe and, uh, most importantly, to persuade Washington uh, to accept its uh, core demand that Ukraine be barred from NATO. But again, the evacuation from U.S. diplomats uh, based in Ukraine has not been confirmed yet, either by the White House or the State, the State Department. And um, there have been some media reports, as you mentioned, that families of American diplomats posted in Kiev um, had apparently been ordered to, to begin evacuation on Monday, but this has not been confirmed yet. Now, Carolina, it seemed listening to the dialogue between the US and Russia uh, that had taken a uh, more conciliatory tone on Friday. Now, so does this military aid package and the arrival of military equipment heighten tensions? Well, I wouldn't say that Russia and the U.S. and and its allies have taken a more conciliatory tone. Uh, Pablo, they are both uh, playing the game, and uh, the report mentioned it of flexing muzzles. Russia has deployed troops, tanks, and uh, missiles along the uh, Ukrainian border, um, and Russian forces are surrounding Ukraine on different sides. And the U.S. has sent a military aid package and has delivered military equipment, as you just mentioned. Uh, but they, of course, want to show that they are willing to support and to help Ukraine on a military ground. But the important question here, Pablo, is what happens if Russia's actions are not clearly military? What if Russia acts in a so-called gray zone, 
meaning a space between war and peace, like, for example, election meddling or cyber attacks in Ukraine. Would this be enough to, to make the United States and its allies impose uh, the severe sanctions uh, President Biden has been talking about? Uh, Russia can definitely also shape the fate of a nation with these kind of strategies. We have already seen that in history and without the cost of a war. Washington correspondent Carolina Chimoy, thanks for your time.